Okay, um, my name is Enrico and uh, I would like today to, to tell you about uh, a little project I've been working around for a few years and uh, I would call it the logarithmic spira, spiral of sound. The reason why I decided to write this software is that uh, well I wanted to I wanted to represent the sound because due to a personal limit I have and uh, because I'm not very good with music so I tried my best to understand it in a rational way and uh, I've been working uh, on a software that could represent sound uh, the first uh, matter was uh, to represent uh, in a plain space uh, the disposition of notes. Uh, the, um, the first way was to, to, to represent it in a rectangular way. So we have each octave one after the other and uh, each octave uh, in the Latin scale, uh, starting with Do, uh, is uh, divided by power of two. These are frequencies. So we start with uh, this. Okay, we can hear it. This normal scale. You know it. Uh, but I wasn't yet uh, satisfied. Uh, the point was that I wanted to join uh, a sound uh, with uh, a, a color. And this will represent uh, more problems later, we will see it. Um, one of the first things that fascinated me about sound is that when uh, you sound uh, a note and the note on another octave, you are just doubling with the frequency. Huh? Let's say this is 220, this is 440. Uh, but I, was, I wasn't really satisfied by this uh, rectangular, so uh, it was born the logarithmic spira. A spiral. Uh, here it is, and uh, now I'll, uh, I'll show you practically how does it work. Um, we have uh, divided in 12 uh, semitones uh, a, a, a circle, and um, okay, here it is. But uh, you have uh, some more uh, variables uh, you can uh, work around. Uh, for example, you, uh, you could say, uh, no, I, I don't want 10 milliseconds for startup, but I want one full second for startup. And then I want it to persist for 50 milliseconds and uh, go out in 485, it's okay. But I don't want a square wave, so I just write zero here. I want a triangular wave, triangular and sinusoidal wave. And the result is that you have something... Uh, that reminds you somehow a uh, violin or an, an arch anyway. Um, and uh, there is also another matter. Uh, in the traditional music we know we use uh, 12 semitones, but uh, with this software you can decide how many you want. Let's say we want seven and you get something mm. like it or not, but those are not even traditional notes, it's just different scale. And uh, you can uh, make a smaller scale or a bigger scale. Uh, let's say we don't want, uh, we want 64. 
and immediately you get this and uh, you see it's very it's very if you take even more and you get very close frequencies you can It's just a game, I know. The reason why I'm making this video is that I would like to understand if uh, it's possible uh, to, 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 to build through that basic software. This is just a, a, a HTML5 and some JavaScript uh, to, to, to make an app, uh, an app that could be useful for musicians to project their own sound. I mean, for example, Look, if I want to persist more and I take two similar notes This is what you get. It's, it's strange. It could be used by musicians or don't know or to send away mosquitoes if you use uh, high frequencies. Uh, Anyway, uh, I did it because of uh, the lack of my instinctual approach with music. Uh, I would be interested to understand if somebody else uh, can find an application uh, for that. Um, last thing, last but not least, is that we have also the square wave. The square wave is uh, the one used to reproduce low frequencies, let's say 8, uh, low frequencies uh, in, uh, with uh, devices without a subwoofer like this, you see? Nothing happens. So you can hear very low frequencies even if you have not a bass woofer. Okay, that's all. Thank you for listening and uh, we'll see for the next episode. Bye.